Welcome to our channel and aboard Tootsie Marie. My name is Yvette and this is Tyler. We are a couple from Seattle, Washington who decided to buy a catamaran and move to the Caribbean. We hope you will join us for this crazy adventure and all the fun and challenging things that lie ahead. All right, guys, welcome back. The day has finally come. The Starlink has arrived. We have it on board here, and I'm gonna do an install. It's uh, long overdue. We no longer will have to mess with searching for prepaid data cards country by country, which will be a major step forward. The install looks pretty straightforward, so hopefully it goes according to plan. Things usually don't, so we'll see how that goes. So I'd gotten ahead of myself and didn't film taking it out of the box, but that's pretty straightforward. Open the lid, remove it from the packaging, install the base, which I'm just temporarily using so I can set it up and down on its on the deck. What I'm going to do is I'm going to disable the motor, as suggested by a lot of other cruisers that already have the system on board, which will lock the panel facing directly vertical. And that will basically make it so you stop getting signal drop as you swing on anchor, which apparently is a pretty big problem. So I currently have it face down, plugged in to the router, and I'm just waiting for it to go into WTF am I doing upside down mode so the pole goes straight up and down where I can then unplug it. And then you drill a hole five inches. Oh, there it goes. Okay, and once it gets into the straight up and down position, go ahead and unplug it from your router. And then what you want to do is measure five inches from each corner with a flex tape. So I'll go ahead and get that marked out. And then you drill a one inch hole, very carefully of course. And then you unplug the motor wire harness and it will be locked in the upright position where then you can pull off this base which is just you know clipped on right now put it in the pole holder and start the mount so if you live on a boat and don't have a flexible tape measure and don't want to take the dinghy to the store to track one down you can also just use a piece of string and a marker which i'm going to do here i'll just measure off the five inches mark it cut it and then use that as my flexible tape measure so hopefully that's accurate enough and it'll get the job done I went ahead and drilled out the bottom of this here so it slides nicely over and actually pretty snug so it's going to be a nice mount there and this will mount on the rail run the wire out to where the router goes which i think i'm going to mount in this waterproof box in the engine compartment because that'd be the easiest using this 400 watt inverter that you just need to pause it in the ground for so pretty straightforward. I'll go ahead and film as the I go. The mounting location will be here on the corner of our solar panel arch. And the wire is just going to run down the pole here to the deck where there's actually already a through hole gland that was used for the previous TV satellite dish. So I'm just going to reuse that hole. And then in the engine compartment here, there's a nice positive and negative that I'm going to hook that inverter to and then plug everything in. Okay, so here it is laid out five inches from the edge to here, from here to here. If you don't have a flexible tape, you can use a piece of string and just put a mark on it like I did. And we'll see. If that doesn't work, don't use a string and a mark. The bit I'm using here is a Forstner one inch bit that I got off of Amazon. Also, I didn't mention earlier, but the drill bit I used to drill out the bottom of the pole holder for the mount is a one and a half inch hole saw that I also got on Amazon. There's the little harness. I don't know if the light will let you see that or not. There it is. Now let's get a pair of tweezers and unplug it. Put a zip tie on it in case we need it for a later date. Looks like I could have gone over another half inch, but this will work. Okay, there you have it. 
we got the hole drilled to disconnect the motor and just shake it around a little bit to get the little disc out if it falls in on you not a big deal and go ahead and shake out as much of the white shavings as well it'd be nice to have air but unfortunately i don't so blowing on it and shaking is the best i got okay here's the harness unhooked from in there let's see if we can get a show of that not very well but here's that i'm just going to stick a zip tie around it and that way you can retrieve it if you need to plug it back in at a future date here it is with the zip tie not sure if necessary or not but i went through the wires here just so in case it slides over the end or slides down it that way it'll keep it at the head there for you so if you do need to pull it back out you're not fishing around for your zip tie and everything else and i guess people leave it long in here so it's not be a big deal I'll go ahead and maybe i'll put a bend in there a couple bends. Now it should be around there somewhere. If you need it. It'll be right inside the hole there and you can see that the zip tie is accessible. I went ahead and ordered this grommet kit off of Amazon. It wasn't very expensive. It has a whole list of sizes here and it's nice to have extras of when you're on a boat anyway so i bought the i think it's a hundred pack something like that i don't know 52 pieces i think so there's smaller ones out there for sure i just got this one to have extras now i have a whole bunch of sizes in case i need to do something else but i'll use this to plug the hole on the dish itself and that way it'll help keep the water out so we'll go ahead and put one on now Let's see what size. Draw the one inch. Just the one inch. And that's a little bit small. Let's see. That last attempt was the seven eighths. This here is the one inch. Looks like you just catch the edge. Kind of feed it in. As it goes around, Let's see if we can't get that pop in there. Give it a little help from the Swiss Army. And there we go. That is definitely a lot drier than these holes here, so. I'm thinking about building my own little housing for it. That'll be in another video. All right, there's our pole holder mount that we put up. I didn't have a spare hand to film while doing it, but pretty straightforward. Just two bolts and it clamps onto the existing rail there. Really nothing special. And here's our makeshift ladder stand on rail balancing act trick to get it up there. Next, I'm going to run, run the wires and mount the inverter in here, going through the little hole right there, and then we'll be up and running. Here's where the cord will pass through. Probably work right there, I guess. We'll get ready to mark our. He's a lefty. You have to make that hole a little bit bigger, but not too much. In order to fit the head of the cord. So I don't have a drill bit the right size, but I should be able to use this.
Here's the cord from the dish end. A little tip for you if you are running it through a wall or your boat or some place that needs to pass. The dish side plug-in is a lot smaller than the side that plugs into the router and it just pulls out so you can run it from that side out, make your holes a little bit smaller instead of drilling an inch and a half hole to get the other one through. Save yourself a little headache. Did you see that little bug? Here, we'll see if it fits. No. Alright, so we got a little ways to go yet. Stop and check periodically so you don't make your hole too big. We are real close on that. It's in there. I'm gonna go ahead and take some epoxy, seal it off first, and then uh, make it slide on in. And we'll keep it moving. I'm just gonna crimp on a couple eye rings here for the inverter that will mount onto a battery terminal post in the engine compartment there that we're gonna install. on the waterproof fit in here so I'll seal off the terminal. Okay here's the box I'm gonna store the router and also the inverter in. So I'm just gonna poke a couple holes here with the drill and then a hole for the Starlink cables to pass and tucks in the corner nicely. Where we wired in our router and the inverter for the dish itself. Open the lid, they're just sitting in there. Nice watertight compartment. And that's where it'll live. Seems to be working good, 24 hours in still. No trouble, so I'd say that's a good deal. Okay, final install in place. Mounted into the pole holder there and it fits so snug. Basically I just put a zip tie so it doesn't pull out and it keeps the cord tight against the shaft there. Used hose clamps to attach the wire down our pole. Into the deck. It's been one month since the install and everything is working really well with minimal drops. We've had no interference with the mast or the boom affecting our signal. The router and inverter that we mounted in the waterproof box in the engine compartment has been working really well. Initially, Tyler was worried that heat might be an issue, but so far, so good. For those of you thinking about getting a Starlink on your boat, our only regret is not getting one sooner. The installation is really straightforward. You can also just use the stand if you don't want to mount it. We're happy to answer any questions you might have. Just leave the... I'm trying to record. And this little Martin wants to be in this shot. Trying to make a nest in our sail bag again cutie. I like to call them sweetie birds because they make a sweet little noise. Just like that. Good morning. Okay, I got to work. We're happy to answer any questions that you might have. There's also a super informative Starlink Cruisers Facebook group with tons of resources. 
I'll be sure to add that link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next Sunday.